Don't forget to check me out over on Instagram at GeekdomBigD where I post not just Dragon Ball stuff, but a lot more than that. And I think you'll have a good time on that page. Instagram.com slash GeekdomBigD. Welcome to a very special edition of the Technique Guide. Now, in the past, I've done a versus battle Technique Guide sort of discussion topic where we discussed which move is Goku's trump card, the Genki Dama, Spirit Bomb, or the Dragon Fist. And I want to bring that back here, but it's going to be a different topic, but a similar sort of, you know, theme, because I'm going to have another YouTuber join me here, and we're going to be discussing which of these two moves is deadlier. And I will, of course, allow you guys to vote in the upper right-hand corner and leave your comments down below and let us know which of these two techniques do you think is more deadly. Now, understand... This is not about which move you like more or the history of each, of each move. You know, we're talking about the Kamehameha versus the Makanko Sapo, the special beam cannon. Obviously, the Kamehameha has way more history behind it. More characters use that move, but that's not what this is about. Remember, we're talking about which move is deadlier and why, and that's going to be kind of the topic of debate here. And of course, please leave your comments down below and let us know. But remember to listen to the entire video, watch the whole video first before leaving a comment because you never know we might make some pretty good points here it's not really a debate it's more so just a discussion so joining me to discuss it here on this video please welcome back to geekdom 101 Quaman. what's up Alrighty, guys it is Quaman here today ready to dive deep into this video topic all right you're doing your extra phone sexy operator voice there oh yeah Oh, I'm fine with it. All right. So the Kamehameha has way more history. It existed way longer. More characters use it. It's kind of the signature move of Dragon Ball. But we're talking about what move is deadlier. And to me, first point I want to make is the fact that the Kamehameha, the first time we saw it, Roshi helped put out the fire at the Ox King's castle. So the Kamehameha sort of has like a... um positive and negative kind of viewpoint to it because it's the manipulation of particles to make energy and all the key techniques are kind of like that but the Kamehameha doesn't always have to be a move that's meant to be deadly it can be used for good and for bad purposes or positive and negative whereas the special beam cannon we are told from the very beginning of this technique being introduced at the very beginning of the Dragon Ball Z portion of the story that Piccolo created this technique specifically to kill Goku. He created this move during the five-year break or time skip between Dragon Ball and Z, between the 23rd Budokai and the arrival of Raditz. That move was made specifically as a death move to kill Goku. The way the move is designed, it does have a higher charge time. It does seem to pack more power into itself because you have to elevate your key in order to really pack the punch needed to, you know, pierce through somebody's, you know, flesh or bone or, or everything. So I feel like that already kind of gets the edge, Kwaman. Well, I think that definitely when you when you look at the, the piercing abilities and look at the fact that Piccolo specifically designed it as a killing move, I feel like that in many ways really validates its efficiency because when you take a look back at the fight with Raditz, right, for example, Goku fired a very powerful Kamehameha at Raditz and Raditz was able to block it. But when Piccolo fired a Masanka, a special beam cannon Makanka Sapo the Makanko first time. Makanka Sapo, it's a Sapo, hard one to say. Yeah, it took me, you gotta it say it me, like that, bro. It, it took me a while to figure out how to say it when Makanko I was younger. Makanko Sapo, yeah. But when either you, way, when, when, you, yeah, when you watch a fan sub that's easier, but yeah. uh, special beam cannon, they know what we're talking about. Yeah, they you guys know what we're talking yeah, about. Yeah. But either way, when he fired it at Raditz for the first time and it pierced his armor off and then the first time it obviously killed him it really showed that a person who had about a quarter of the power level of Raditz was able to successfully kill him whereas with Goku when he uses Kamehameha which was also a very powerful blast it was able to be blocked and it really showed that if you really create an energy in a way where the tip is a very is specifically designed to pierce I feel like in a head-to-head -head matchup if you have equal power the special beam cannon would obviously have the ability to kill a lot easier. Yeah, but it's not that simple either because later on in the series, we've seen the special beam cannon get blocked and deflected, you know, as the series went on. I think you made a very good point in that the move is powerful enough because of the focus of energy and the way that the key manipulation is designed. It's meant to literally be, and I hate to say it, but it is like a cannon, like a gun. It's supposed to shoot yeah. right through you, you know, it's a... Uh, the special beam cannon is specifically like 
like having a gun at the at your fingertips. Yes. But also it can be deflected depending on the power of somebody else and how focused they were. Because we have to keep this in mind as well. When Piccolo shot the move at Raditz, Goku was holding him in a full Nelson type position. Um, and because of that, his chest was exposed and there was no way for him to block it. Now, in theory, Radix could have probably been able to block that move if he was focused enough, if he was able to yeah. see it coming. And because he was faster and stronger than Piccolo, that in theory, yes, I think he could have blocked that move. And, and, and maybe he would have actually stung his hand and maybe it would have hurt him, sort of like what happened with Nappa, you know, um, where he blocked Gohan's move, even though Gohan right. was not as strong as him. Yeah, his hand was tingly. You know, that could happen, but... To your point, it does show the power of the move that even though Rats was stronger, because he hit him right at the correct spot, right in the chest area, that was it. I mean, and it became one of the most violent scenes in Dragon Ball Z. Obviously, the um the Kai version is a little bit less violent um, because the TV standards in Japan had changed by then. But the original Z version super gory, especially if you watch it uncut. If you're watching the oh, edited yeah. ocean dub, forget it. Yeah, so... There is that. However, the Kamehameha does have advantages. For example, uh, with the Kamehameha, and people forget about this, you can use your feet to fire the Kamehameha, and that's always kind of a cool thing. Goku did do that at one point. Um, also, the Kamehameha seems to be a lot easier to learn, which actually might be a detriment towards it because the one advantage that the Makanko Sapo had is that you can do it with one hand because Piccolo did it with one hand. However... Right. Gohan did the Kamehameha with one hand as well. So, you know, with the father-son Kamehameha. So I feel like that's an irrelevant point. They're both kind of at a tie right there. You know, now with the special beam cannon, though, like I, I mentioned it in a previous video we did, Piccolo was able to fire that in the Universe 6 like auditorium and fry through a, a glass ceiling that was made by Whis and Vados, the angels. So it's one of those moves where I feel like if the user has enough key and is able to pinpoint it on one spot, it's almost like like being a sniper. That's the way I equate that move, if that makes sense. Right, I've always looked at it in that way too, especially when you when you look at the focus, whereas you look at the Kamehameha as much more of a broad energy blast. And I definitely feel like when you compare a move like the Kamehameha or the Final Flash, the way that the energy is generated seems to cover a more wide area, whereas the Special Beam Cannon is a much more focused technique. And I feel right. like if we if we analyze the characters that are using these techniques, I definitely feel like for a much more technical character like Piccolo, who does not have the raw power of some of these characters, it would make sense why he would develop his techniques like this. So when, when we were talking earlier about it, Geekdom, while there are characters that have been able to deflect the Makanko Sapo or characters that have been able to dodge it, I definitely think that it's a much more effective technique the closer you are in power to your opponent. But later on in Dragon Ball, when you have guys that are so much stronger than Piccolo, at that point, it really doesn't have a lot of substance to it. Right. But also, when we look at the technique by itself, I also feel like one of the important points, and it's basic math, let's say we have two characters that are of equal power, and one of them does the Kamehameha, one does the Makanko Sapo, I believe the special beam cannon would legit pierce right through the Kamehameha yep. and hit the other guy because... It's all about math, you know, and velocity. I'm not going to get into the whole, like, science aspect of it. But essentially, when you have a aerodynamic is the word, an aerodynamic type of key blast that has, like, a drill to it, you know, it's meant to rip a hole in something, right? And the Kamehameha is usually bigger, wider, more of a – harder to dodge in many ways, yes. I would say, um, than the special beam cannon. But – I could just picture it just drilling right through it and just finishing off the opponent because the thing is, it does have a larger charge time because of the fact that obviously when Piccolo first did the move, he was developing and still it wasn't really mastered yet. And second of all, I feel like he focuses his energy on a much smaller sort of circumference. And because it was a smaller circumference, I think... Yes, it's it's sort of like a needle, right? That's another comparison right there. Like, yeah. a, like getting pinched by a needle, you know what I mean? It's, it's, it's going to sting you, but it could if you sting yourself with a needle, you know, you might get blood right away. Whereas if you hit yourself with a brick, you might just get a bruise because that needle is meant to pierce right through. So I feel like, you know, that move, if connected, I mean, it's meant to kill, dude. It's, it yes. is a move that is meant to kill. So I think... Special Beam Cannon wins as far as what's deadlier, 
But at the same time, the Kamehameha has a pretty decent... I mean, again, it's been used so many times. And it, there's more variety in that move. There's more different ways to angle the move and things of that right. nature. Uh, Goku has actually used that move to kind of fire as a projectile to make himself sort of bounce up and things like that, like a catapult type thing. You can do more with the Kamehameha. But the Makanko Sapo, as far as if your goal is to take someone's life, I mean, I'm going with that, bro. It just seems more effective if you ask me. Right. And I think there are two very important points we can make to this, because in many ways, the Makanko Sapo is very similar to the death beam that both Frieza and Cell use. But what I think... Very similar. And the Dodonpa. Right. But what I think is most important, Geekdom, is I think that these techniques are most important in terms of who you are fighting against. So I'll give you a perfect example, right? If you are fighting a character like, let's say, Majin Buu or Cell... I would say that the Kamehameha would be a more effective technique because its broader range of area would be better for taking down an opponent that, that can regenerate. Can, that can regenerate, right? right? But if right. you're fighting against a person who can't regenerate, then I would say just get a headshot or a chest shot and they're dead. Right. So I think that really, it just really depends. Or even for certain characters like Kid Buu specifically, like you would need an extremely wide area like the Spirit Bomb to completely develop his, like envelop his body so that he has no space to regenerate. Right, you know? right, right. Yeah, no. Or like no, Omega you... Shenron. So I definitely yeah. think it's the type of opponent you're fighting against. For sure, for sure. Go ahead and vote in the upper right hand corner for which move you think is the deadlier. Again, don't just pick which one you like more. I like both moves. Um, but we're talking about like what move is, is more effective. Like if you were in battle and you had to fight somebody, which move would you most likely use? Of course, like Quinn said, you know, it depends on who you're fighting against, but if it's just a regular mortal or, you know, whatever, it, it's different. Obviously, characters like Whis and Grand Priest. Neither one's going to work on them unless you're at their level, right? That's the only way yeah. to work. And even then, I'm not too sure. So let us know in the upper right. Leave a comment, of course, with your thoughts. And thank you, Kwan Man, for joining me for this discussion. Anytime, bro. All right. We'll talk to you all next time. And thank you once again. Uh, if you like this video, check these out. And don't forget to vote. Bye.